Welcome back. Well, we bring to you now a development on a story that got a lot of you very, very angry indeed yesterday. And that is the story of the transgender convicted rapist, now known as Isla Bryson, who won't be imprisoned in a women's jail anymore. I mean, the fact that they were originally going to be boggles the mind, doesn't it? But the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, earlier confirmed that Bryson, formerly known as Adam Graham, won't be incarcerated at Quanton Vale Women's Prison in Scotland. Joining us to shed some more light on this story is GB News' Scotland reporter, Tony Maguire, who is there now. Tony, thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so an interesting development, this, from Sturge. Yes, certainly um, this has been going to be seen by many as, as rowing back on our, our previous stance. Um, Ailey... Ailey Bryson is, is inside Cortonville just now, we believe. Um, and certainly that, as you said, had a lot of people quite angry. Where do you house um, a prisoner who's been convicted of two rapes um, in 2016 and 2019 in Glasgow, um, who transitioned to become a woman? Um, she raped, sorry, she raped as a, as a man um, and then transitioned... Um, before the, she was incarcerated inside. So a lot of people will want to know, and Nicola Sturgeon today finally gave an answer. Let's hear what she has to say. It would not be appropriate for me, in respect of any prisoner, to give details of where they are being incarcerated. But given the understandable public and parliamentary concern in this case, I can confirm to Parliament that this prisoner will not be incarcerated at Contondale Women's Prison. And I hope that provides assurance to the public presiding officer, not least to the victims in this particular case. OK, well, look, Tony, thank you very much for bringing us that report. Just from outside the prison in question, that's GB News' Scotland reporter, Tony McGuire, bringing you up to date with the story that, yes, like I said, got a lot of you very hot under the collar in relation to that particular, well, man, really, who transitioned into womanhood only after being caught and uh, charged with two rapes, subsequently found guilty of two rapes and was going to be housed in a women's prison. Joining us now is Susan Smith, co-director of Four Women Scotland. Susan, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. Has sanity finally prevailed or is this just still a very worrying situation? Well, sort of. But um, it's still worrying because this, this ridiculous policy is still in place. The um, Scottish Prison Service policy was written really by lobbyists and it is based on self-ID. And there is a bit of a presumption there that somebody's declared or preferred gender is the thing that prison officers should be looking at. And it causes problems not only when male prisoners are moved into the women's estate and there are male prisoners in the women's estate including at least two murderers um, but it also causes problems for those male prison when those male prisoners have been held in the men's estate um, i think policy i think so, some of the some of the practices may have changed but the policy actually said that if a male prisoner had self-declared themselves to be a woman, then they could demand that intimate searches were carried out by female prison officers. Mm. And that caused trouble in the case of yeah. one, um, oh, well, well, several, is... several. Uh, 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 look, absolutely. I mean, it's another layer to it. And yesterday I was very focused on the other inmates, the female inmates. Clearly, you just raised an issue there about female members of staff, which I must say I hadn't originally thought of. But last night I was thinking to myself about this story and I thought, you know what? Yesterday I didn't actually ask about the victims and that was an oversight. So how do you think that the female victims who were raped by this man must be feeling knowing that, he essentially put a wig on and bought a pink handbag and was very nearly sent in, well, has been sent into, but probably won't be staying there as a women's prison. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have, have brought up time and again this idea of if you are um, a traumatised victim and not only do you have the, the indignity and the fear of going into a court and the questions you might be asked, but you're listening to the court describing the person who raped you as a woman and talking about her penis and, um, and, and to cap it all off, I think in this case, which was absolutely abhorrent, the, 
the defense tried to spin this line that this was another vulnerable woman because, and solely because, he claimed he was transitioning. So they were using this idea of transgender status, which is one that is pushed constantly by Sturgeon and others, that trans people are vulnerable and marginalized. So they were picking up on that and saying, well, because this is a trans person, automatically, therefore, he is vulnerable and marginalized and therefore couldn't have committed this crime. And, and of course, Sturgeon and Robertson have stood up in Parliament and said, nobody would do this, this would never happen. Well, this has happened. So they either need to decide, is this a violent predatory man who exploited a loophole within a self-ID system, which is what they have in the prison service, yeah. or this is a genuine vulnerable trans person, but they can't have it both ways. No, they can't have it both ways. And you hit on a really interesting point there, which is if the trans community keeps being bracketed as an incredibly vulnerable, marginalised community. And I would argue the tone of the way that members of the trans community are often described when it comes to certain politicians puts them in the same class, wrongly, as people with, say, a disability or other marginalised groups. And therefore means that they can go and stand in a court, like you just highlighted there, Susan, and try to mask the fact that they are a double rapist and seek some sympathy by virtue of being now part of a, quote, marginalised community. I would argue, Susan, that there was nothing particularly vulnerable about this man when he was raping two women. No. And, and the testimony the victims gave, obviously, was that he was using his superior physical strength, which, again, is something where we keep being told, no, there's no difference. But obviously, he used his advantages as a man to rape two women. And for, for people to be dancing around and talking about this person as though they're a woman is is really sickening. And I, uh, yeah, as you say, must be absolutely devastating for the victims. I want to ask, when you're campaigning or having discussions like these up in Scotland, when you're attending things like votes in Holyrood or wherever, there's always a lot of demonstrations on either side. Do you feel as though you're in the minority now with your views? No, and certainly not in Scotland. I mean, the um, the latest polls show that an overwhelming number of people are against this bill and an overwhelming number of people who would support the SNP are against this bill. So it's been really interesting because it's probably the first time, you know, well, it is the first time that the UK government have used a Section 35. And it, the reaction has been interesting from all quarters because you would naturally expect some of the people who are okay. SNP supporters to think this was Westminster interference. But in fact, the overwhelming response has been, thank goodness that this has exactly. been blocked because it's so awful. And, and I ask that question because I'm convinced that if you put this, along with quite a few other issues, frankly, facing this country, to a public vote, there would be an overwhelming consensus that what's happening now is madness. And I can't help but wonder if Nicola Sturgeon has slipped a bit here, whether or not she's thought, well, this is a hill I want to die on. And, well, frankly, that hill is crumbling beneath her because, like you've said, plenty of people who might normally vote SNP, for whatever reason, actually don't want male rapists in female prisons. And I would argue it's an odd choice of hers to decide that she's going into bat for this particular issue. But Susan, thank you very much. I could talk to you all day. Sorry, we're going to have to cut it short. Afraid. Susan Smith, the co-director of Women, for Women Scotland, I should say. Thank you very, very much. Right, moving on. Down